Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how the brushless drive system works for my Beetleweight Combat Robot Anxiety Attack. I'm going to show you how to take a 22mm planetary gearbox from Servo City and made it with an AeroDrive SK3 uh, 2118 brushless motor so that you can make your very own brushless drive system for your Beetleweight robot. Let's take all this over to the workbench and see how it's done. In this video, I'm not really going to go too in-depth about the benefits and the pros and cons of brushless versus brushed, but I can sum it up in kind of general terms. Generally speaking, a brushed system such as this is going to be heavier, but it's also going to be more reliable. A brushless system like this one over here is going to be a lot lighter, and it's going to have a better power to weight ratio, hence making it lighter, but it's going to be a little bit more complicated to implement, uh, mostly because of the spinning outrunner here, uh, the much higher RPM ratio, so the need for a higher gearing, and a couple other little factors like that. You will also need to mate this with a custom ESC and possibly do some custom programming. So brushed or brushless is not really for the beginner or the faint of heart, but it does have some benefits and there is a good reason why a lot of people are doing it. And if we look at this scale over here, this kind of um, paints a nice picture of the difference. So this brushless setup is weighing in at around, um, what is it, 68 grams, and the brushed equivalent is about 93, 94 grams. So there's about a 50% weight savings in going with the brushless, and you can also see there is a pretty good size benefit as well. So that's really all I'm gonna say about brushed versus brushless. Let's go ahead and start taking these apart. In the description, I have links to all of these products, so you can definitely check that to know exactly what I'm using. This is the Premium Planetary Gearbox from Servo City. It is a 22 millimeter diameter right there, and they do made it with um, one of these little brushed motors. I'm using the 280 RPM version. They list everything by the final RPM out here, so this is only 280 RPM, but the gearbox is something completely different. The gearbox is a 43 to 1. If you click on all the various uh, motors on their website and just scroll down to the specs, they actually do list the ratio of the gearbox. So this is a 43 to 1. A little quick um, note about calculating final RPM. So this is a 3100 kV motor, which means that for every volt we put into it, it is 3100 or 3000 RPM. So if you're using a one cell lithium battery, which would be eh, roughly four volts, then that would be four times three, you'd get 12,000 RPM. And then if we take what, 12, thousand divided by 43, that would give us a final output of about 280 RPM, which is um, actually really interesting. Uh, so one volt will give you about 280 RPM. But if we use a two cell, it's going to be about double that. If we use a three cell, it's going to be three times, and the four cell, it's going to be four times that. So that is basically how you calculate this, is however many cells you're using for the battery, multiply that by four, then multiply that by the KV rating, That'll give you the final RPM value here, and then divide that by your gearbox or your gear ratio here, and that will give you your final output. I am using a four cell, so four times four, um, four cells times four volts times 3,100 gives me like, I don't know, close to 50,000 divided by 43. My final output is about 1,100 RPM. Then you're going to have to take into account the diameter of your wheel because each wheel, one revolution, will travel a different distance. So pay attention to that and that will determine your final speed. I think generally speaking, the rule of thumb today is you want at top speed to be able to get across the arena in like one or two seconds, something like that. So figure out the size of your arena, figure out the size of your tire, and then just kind of work backwards and figure out what final RPM you want at your motor. And then that will determine, you know, your battery. But there's a lot of variables, so I can't make all those decisions for you. Um, in the description down below, I have a couple links to some calculators that might be able to help you out. Okay, with all that out of the way, let's start taking this apart. You've got four little screws on the face of this. We're just going to go ahead and take those off. This one's already been pre-loosened because, well, i got to prepare for the video, you know? So we just undo these four. And be careful not to let this separate. 
the uh, motor should just come right off if I've taken all these off. There we go. So the motor has the base plate on it and you have this little steel washer. And then this is what your planetary gearbox looks like. So if you've never seen a planetary gearbox, um, this is what they look like. You have all these little um, gears in the middle and they spin around this inside track. There's names for all of these. I think these are the planets or something like that. But anyway, this is what a planetary gearbox looks like inside. And it will just come apart at this point. So be careful about that. Um, might want to hold it in place. If I put it upside down like that, all the stuff will fall out. So I'm just going to kind of set it like that for now. So first things first, we need to get this mounting plate off of here. So you can just kind of flick that little thing away. There's two screws. We're going to take these off. And now that mounting plate comes off. The biggest trick here is finding a mounting plate that works with your motor. Thankfully, these are a very similar size, so it works together. So there's no real issue there. And I'll go into those details a little bit later. Next thing we need to do is take off this pinion gear. And it is pretty tight on there, and there's a couple easy ways to do this. So let's bring this over to the Arbor Press, and I'll show you one of the ways to get this off. So what we're trying to do here is remove this pinion with hopefully not damaging the motor. It doesn't really matter. We're not going to use it, but getting this motor off from the shaft. I machined this little plate, which just has a little channel, which you can slide in and then we can easily press it out. I realize that most people are not going to be able to do this, so I have another solution. Now, there's a couple other ways that you could do this that I don't really recommend, but if you're in a pinch, you could use two flat-headed screwdrivers on either side, so like one on each side, and you pry it up, and that could pop it off. I don't really recommend this. I have another way to do it. Um, so let's do it by my method, and then I'll go ahead and put it back on, and then I'll show you another way to do it if you don't have an arbor press or you don't have you know, all these little fancy tools sitting around. So it's pretty simple. I'm just using a pair of one, two, three blocks to space this up a little bit, and then I simply slide this inside like that, and then the press comes down and pushes through this. Now, um, you need something that's about the same size to be able to push the motor down through. I found that the um, little mounting screws that come with the brushless motors worked just fine. So let me go grab those. So here is a little pair of hemostats with the um, screw in it. And then we're just gonna kind of line things up. And simple as that. We have our pinion and the motor is free. So now we go ahead and put those together and we're good to go. Let me show you another way if you don't have one of these plates. So I realize not everyone has an arbor press and I realize not everyone has a milling machine or a CNC machine to make a little piece like this. So I'm going to use a couple one, two, three blocks again. You can use any blocks that are just a standard size. I just happen to have these sitting right here. And then I saw this trick from a um, fellow maker. Um, I think it was Chris that um, did this. So we're just going to use a couple of razor blades and we're just going to make our own little spacer. So you see they just kind of sit like that and there's that nice little hole in the middle. So we're going to use these. Just kind of go inside that space, being very careful not to cut yourself on camera. Um, I actually haven't done this yet. I'm just going to use the one. We're going to see how that works out. So yeah, that should suspend it. And then I don't know how well this is going to work out, but I'm just going to hold the screw with some hemostats. And then we're just going to try tapping it in. Let's see how that works out. Should work out fine. these as close as possible. I am going to use two of them because it's just going to kind of wobble on the side there. I'm just going to hold that over the top. And simple as that, our pinion is free. So 
yeah, I guess you could do this as well. It's pretty simple just to line two of these up like that. So, okay, now we have our pinion free. Let's go ahead and modify this motor so that we can put on the pinion. Okay, so here's where things get a little tricky. For the brushless motor, we need to move this shaft a little bit. Uh, basically what I'm doing is I'm using this face or the um, back side of the motor to mount boop, against the gearbox like that. So what we need to do is loosen this shaft and then kind of push it through the back a little bit and then attach the pinion. And so you're gonna need a, I think this is a 1.27 millimeter um, Allen key to fit in there to loosen the motor. And then we're just gonna press it back and give ourselves enough room to attach the pinion. When you're doing this, make sure you're using a high quality Allen key and make sure it's really in the hole. If it's not in the hole and you end up stripping out that um, little set screw in there, there's really not a whole lot you can do after that. So we're just gonna loosen this enough and then we're just going to basically push the shaft through like that. I'm gonna go ahead and use the Arbor Press just because it is the easiest way to do this. So here we are, now we have the motor with the shaft sticking out. Um, you might need to kind of adjust this length. Essentially what we're trying to do is match the distance from this face to the end of the shaft. So whatever the distance is from here to there, we're going to match that. So I just simply use my calipers, boom, set it like that. It looks like it's five millimeters and we just wanna make sure that our shaft is sticking out that same amount of distance. So boom, sit there and right there at five millimeters. I'm gonna remove this C-clip and then we're going to use the Arbor Press to press this back on. You know what, I figured I'd show this just in case. Um, so here's the pinion, we're just gonna go kind of loosely set on there. If you don't have an Arbor Press, you can still just do this with a good old trusty hammer. Just make sure everything is nice and lined up. You have a solid surface. And there it is, our pinion is on and everything spins nice and freely. So now it's just a matter of putting this back on and reassembling it. Since this motor has 14 millimeter hole spacing across there, it works with the mounting plate that comes included. And so we're almost done here. When you're putting this mounting plate on, I'm gonna unscrew it a little bit. So you'll notice that it has a little bit of wiggle and play. What you wanna do is get it as centered as you can. So like this is a little bit off center, so I'm just gonna kinda of push it back a little bit and just kinda of keep tightening it slowly until everything is centered. So you just kinda of look at it dead on and make sure that it is centered. If it's not centered, you're gonna get uneven wear on that pinion and that is not going to be good. So this looks nice and centered. We're gonna go ahead and put this little um, stainless steel shim back on, and then now we can just put the whole thing back together. So there you go, that's pretty much all there is to it. Um, these both spin nice and free, and that's about what it should look like. If it's binding up or doesn't spin perfectly smooth, you're gonna wanna go ahead and take off the gearbox again, take off the adapter plate, and just kinda make sure everything is re-centered. Sometimes what you can do is put the adapter plate on kinda loose, then put on the gearbox, spin it around, let the motor kinda find its center, take the gearbox back off and then tighten everything back down. It might, you know, wanna go through a couple times just to make sure it is really smooth. But if this isn't super smooth, you're gonna end up having some issues with premature wear and no one wants that. The last and final note I had about these uh, motors is this does use a four millimeter output shaft, which is really common. Uh, you can find all the um, Bainbot wheel hubs in four millimeter. I think there's even some Colson's and the Fingertech um, 
foam wheel kind of things, they all have it. Here is what I did in a um, two-wheel drive setup where I used a pulley. Uh, I made these pulleys in SolidWorks and printed them with Shapeways. This uses that new um, HP printer, so it's just a uh, round belt pulley that I made, and it has these two little indexing pins that go into these little dowels that connect in with the BaneBots hub. So you would attach this to the output shaft with the normal set screw the normal way, and then you can transfer the power into a pulley just using these two little pins. The reason I did this is because you can't really do a D shaft in a 3D printed component like this, so this is the easiest way to get these two to be coupled together. I've seen other people also do like a double width BaneBots hub and then do some machining on it, but this is a really pretty easy way to get this done. You can print this out through Shapeways, get it in, and then just um, take your shaft, push it through the two at once, like that, and then just drill through the holes as guide holes to drill into the BaneBot. So this actually worked pretty well for me. So just one of the ideas on how you can attach a pulley to the end of this motor. So that's really all there is to converting one of these motors into a brushless drive. A couple of notes. I didn't go into all of the little variations and all the little tweaks that you can do on this. Me personally, I like to leave the pinion just pressed on. If it slips, it slips. I don't really care all that much. Some people don't want their pinion slipping for whatever reason, and they will use either Loctite, you can use super glue, or I've even seen people solder the pinion onto the shaft. That is definitely something else that you can do. Also, since we removed that C-clip, it is theoretically possible for this can to pull out and leave the pinion with it. That is within the realm of possibility in combat robots. I usually fully constrain my motor to where I have something against the back of it so the can can't fly out. That is also something you might want to think about. Also, this shaft extends out the back, so you could cut that off or you could make a um, space for it, something like that. So there's definitely a couple things to consider. In addition, you will need to custom program an ESC, your electronic speed controller, to control this. Brushless motors work a little bit different than brushed. With a brush motor, you can just apply voltage and it starts spinning. With a brushless motor, you will need a dedicated ESC and you will need to get one and program it for forward and reverse. I have a whole separate video where I cover this, um, Simon K reprogramming. Check out that video. I think the ZTW Spider, the 20 amp, is kind of the flavor of the month right now. I can try and keep an updated link down in the description, but these things get discontinued constantly, so whatever the new most popular ESC will change. Uh, most likely by the time you watch this video. So hopefully you got some information out of this and hopefully you will convert all your beetles over to brushless drive because it's pretty cool, save some weight. As always, thanks for watching. Check out my Facebook page for any updates and see you again next time.